Hey everybody, Sherry from The Watering Mouth here. So happy to have this guest here, Bonnie. Bonnie, thank you so much for being here. Um, This has actually been a long time that I've been wanting to interview you because you're amazing success and we finally, the stars aligned and we got to get together. So thank you so much for being here, Bonnie. Thank you for inviting me. I've been dying to do this too. (laughs) Good deal. Yeah, and it's so funny actually because Bonnie lives what is it like an hour from me, half an hour from me? Yeah. Super close. It, yeah. I live in Vegas and she lives in Pahrump, Nevada. So pretty cool. We're neighbors and we're finally getting our stuff west. together. What's up? It's 60 miles west of Las Vegas. 60 miles west. There you go. Yep. So I waved to her. <laughs> <laughs> and so here we are doing an interview with Bonnie. If you are watching the YouTube channel or listening to the podcast, thank you for being here. And let's get into it because Bonnie has had such an amazing transformation and I have been following her progress. Now, if you have been in my Facebook group, the private free Facebook group that anyone can join called the High Nutrient Lifestyle Group. I'm going to link to everything I talk about in this podcast video um, down in the description of wherever you're watching this. So you can just click right over there. But she has been part of this Facebook group for quite a while and and continually posting her before and after shots. And everybody goes (laughs) wild when Bonnie posts a shot. So uh, I'm going to have an image of that as well that you can look at too and the thumbnail. um, And hopefully maybe we'll have one right here too, but we'll we'll see about that. But I mean, it's just been an incredible transformation, Bonnie. It's been so wonderful to get to watch you. And you also have a YouTube channel now that you you cook on as well. So we're going to talk about that one. You can actually see it on the board behind me. It's a Nutritarian and La La Land, all nutritarian stuff, really good channel. So um, feel free to check her out there too. We're going to talk more about that at the end here, but I would just like to know how were you originally introduced to the nutritarian lifestyle? Like what's your story when you first started eating this way? Well, I was 300 pounds and in the hospital every month from 2013 to 2000. 18 for my heart problems and all kinds of issues. And one of the times I had to do a stress test, a stress test. And, oh, that was horrible because I couldn't even walk around in my own house, let alone on a treadmill. And the technician suggested eat to live. And I can't find him anywhere. I swear he was an angel that came in and swooped down and gave me that advice and just went away, you know. (laughs) And I was like, oh, okay. I did, I started, I started to read it and I started to try and it, and it kind of didn't work at first because I wasn't really there. So I also started going to therapy because my mind had to be right and ready for it. It's not just your body. Your mind has to be ready to, I did want to change, but I didn't know how I, I, it's just like all the, you know, everything had to connect. So I had like, like I said, it started, I lost my job in 2013 because of the health problems. I couldn't go back because any activity sent me to the hospital, even oh. just sweeping a small room. And um, that's when I got the book and I started. But then the therapy, I had to, had to kind of push it along. And it took me like four years of therapy, maybe, to finally get to the right spot where I was there. Mm, mindset and once wise, I was yeah. there, that was it. I was like, this is medicine. This is uh, to stay alive. This is, uh, and everybody's like, how do you not eat that stuff? I say, because I don't want to die. Everybody, I couldn't, I couldn't understand that everybody wasn't at the spot I was in my mind. Yep. Right. That I was like so dangerous to touch that stuff and to even want it. Mm-hmm. And that's what kept me so focused is I don't want to die. I yep. don't want to die. So you started out at your highest was around 300 pounds. Is that right? And where are you now? I'm 140. I, I bounced from 143 to 148, but right now I'm like 145. Wow. Yeah. And uh, my goal is 130. Is that 155 pounds? Did I do the math right? No. Yes. I lost 155. That's amazing. And so inspiring. And your goal is only what? 10 pounds away or 130. so? Yeah. 130. Yeah. 130. Okay. Pounds. Yep. Yeah. 15 pounds. That, wow. That, that makes my, my uh, what is the, 
What are those letters? The BMI. Your, your best- the <laughs> BMI. Yeah, the BMI would be just right. But I'm five foot six. Okay. And uh, and that is it, it's absolutely perfect. And I can't wait because I'm going to put my wedding dress on and take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we can't wait to see that before and after too. That's going to be beautiful. Yes, yes, I can't wait. So. When was it that, so how long has it taken you to get this 150 so pounds off? I, I literally started aggressively in 2018. Okay. Got it. At the end of 2018, actually in, uh, in December of okay. 2000, the, the December 1st, it was, that was it. I was ready. I was going okay. head in, you know? So it's been about, th- and it's been about three and a half years, two and a half years. What's the math? Three and a half years there. Uh, Let's see. Almost four years. December, it'll be four years. Yep. Three and a half years. Wow. That's incredible. So it's possible. (laughs) And that's, that's the huge takeaway here is that it's possible. But for, you know, that question that you had there, that was, um, that really struck me when the way that you said that is that other people are saying, well, how do you do it? Like, how do you stick to it? Right. And that's what really is the whole basis of my business, what I do online is teach people how to do it, which is the mindset shift that you're talking about. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, I know you said that you went to therapy, but how did you go from like, what was it actually that had you go from I'm eating this other way? We can talk about that too, what you were eating, but to suddenly it's, you know, there's no other way back. What was that? It was kind of a spiritual journey too. Okay. It was uh, the therapy, and she introduced me to meditating and keeping mm. my mind, you know, clear of all that garbage. Mm. And just like, you know, and um, and besides the food thing, it helps me deal with every people that, like, I used to be so sensitive. And somebody would get mad, and I would cry, but uh-huh. I am like, they're mad. And that's their emotions. I'm not taking it from them. Mm. Stuff like that. All that stuff really helped me stay. Because, I mean, emotional eating, hello. Mm. And having a lot of emotions and being sensitive and everything bothered me. That's where it went. Mm. And those two things have to work out together in order for it to really work. And that was an evolution on my part and, and, and sticking to the, the meditation was very important. That was medicine for me too, Mm. besides the food. Yeah. Yeah. I can totally understand that. I have the the medical condition I kept going back and forth to the hospital with is, um, being treated with food. Now it's called hyperaldosteronism. Okay. And most people who have it have really high blood pressure. And um, it really messes up with your adrenal gland and your endocrine system. But my blood pressure is actually kind of low. Okay. So I got to watch that too. So sometimes I can't go very low salt. I have to kind of put a little more in there. Yeah. And not not the bad stuff. Just like um, I drink a lot of celery juice. Okay. Which is, uh, oh, you yeah. know, a natural high, very high sodium, sodium thing. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. Mm-hmm. That helps a lot. I always have, every day I have to have coconut water, potatoes, and bananas every single day so I can keep that. And I don't want to take those darn horse pills because they get stuck in my throat, the potassium yep. pills. Yep. So I'm doing it with food. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Let's pause here for a sec because I'm going to let the cat out. So we'll just do some. Um... Oh, I can let the dog out too. Yeah, I go ahead. Do with me. Perfect. Perfect. Let's do it. <laughs> And we're back. We had to take care of the animals for a second there, <laughs> both on both sides. Um, so, so you have really found out a lot of what works for your body and, you know, healing the heart issues and the sodium things just with food. Um, mm-hmm. So how did you originally find Eat to Live? It was the, uh, the guy who was doing the stress test, the technician. Oh, yeah. And he... Okay. He literally, he literally, along with Joel Furman, saved my life and you. I want to thank you because I've been following you from the first day I started. Oh, really? The first day. You well, know, tell me I about this. You. I, I mean, the recipes you had, you helped me because I was like, what do I do? Instantly, you think I'm going to eat like a rabbit. 
Yeah. I don't know why people think that. You think you're going to hate it. Yeah. My sister actually served me, it was a barbecue. She served me cherry tomatoes and celery or something. I'm like, are you kidding me? And her daughter was vegan. I'm like, okay, I got to learn how to take care of myself. You know? Yep. They have no idea. It's right. So your, your videos, along with the whole food plant-based cooking show, that lady's amazing. She's wonderful. Yep. Jill Dalton. Jill Dalton. What's her name? Uh Uh-huh. And you too. Have been my my inspiration and Pinterest is amazing. Plus, mm. having to uh, take a regular vegan recipe and turn it nutritarian, I've been a master of doing that. Okay. I'm really good at doing that. That's awesome. No That's... junk in my recipe. Well, some recipes on my channel are uh, only uh, they're not really nutritarian. I wanted to, there was an experiment I was doing to try to bring back some of the kids' Kids is, is that a word? The know. kids' uh, favorite recipes when they were young and make them oh. into a healthier version. There was a couple of recipes like that, but mostly they are nutritarian. That's why I say I'm in La La Land because I'm kind of, I was kind of just floating around trying to that's learn, you know. So that's so good. Yeah. And I mean, I'm just on your channel right now and there's just so many videos, you know, vegan spaghetti sauce, vegan Mexican casserole, bean chili, Italian sausage, um, Salisbury steak, chickpea burgers, purple. I mean, just so many. And it just makes your mouth water just reading the titles, right? Because you know what the you know what the standard American diet versions are like. And then to be able for me always, it's so interesting. Like I had a friend recently. Uh, we were just talking about whatever, talking about healthy eating, and all of a sudden she said something like, "And man, that chickpea pasta is just the worst. It is the worst." And I was like, "It's my favorite." <laughs> I do. I love it. And I didn't have the heart to say like that. It's like the best thing in the world to me because it just showed so much of that transformation you can make over time of learning to just love these foods and, and, and they make you feel so good and you have such better, like, uh, just emotional control around them too, because they have fiber and they have all the nutrients and everything. So and yeah. It keeps you full. Exactly. It keeps you full when pasta, just, you're going to be hungry in two hours. Yep. And you're just eating, 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 unless you binge on it. Like I used to. Yeah, for sure. Oh my boy. Yeah. So, so can you tell me a little bit about what you were coming from? What was your diet like before? Like what's your history with dieting and eating and things like that? Um, I was really good at cooking fattening foods too. I mean, I was, yeah. uh, I come from an Irish, uh, my grandmother was the best cook ever. She did mm. a pot roast, the beef stew. Oh yeah. And, and that's, that's why I was doing too on the channel. I never made pot roast vegan. I, I, I don't know how that's possible, but yep. no, I did the, um, I think I did a jackfruit stew or something like nice. that. Nice. Um, I was just trying to, you know, bring up family recipes and stuff, yep. but yeah, it was, a uh, chicken. I, I didn't eat a lot of beef all the time because, um, I don't know. I just, I wasn't a big fan. Of, I was a hamburger holic. If that's if you know the word, a yep. hamburger-holic. It is now. <laughs> like whipping <laughs> from Popeye. Yep. But also, I also, I forgot. I found out I was allergic to milk as a baby and I always have been. Okay. But also it's not the lactose thing. I'm allergic to animal protein. I'm not allergic. A sensitive is the word. Yep. So a lot of my pain and stomach problems my entire life could have been prevented if I realized I being vegan would have saved me. Yeah. Wow. That's another thing. So that it started with the beef thing. It was the worst because I couldn't eat fast food without having, I mean, take one bite and I'd run to the bathroom. Wow. Okay. And, um, I still eat it. Isn't that dumb? I know. <laughs> <For yourself. Yeah. laughs> I couldn't believe I said that. And I, yep. and I was like, I'm going for some more, you know? Yep. Yep. It's crazy, it's isn't it? Uh-huh. It's cr- it causes you to double over. Pain. Yeah. And I know from oh my, my experience God. too, with, cause my experience was always binge eating. And so I would get, and it didn't matter what the food was. Usually it was carb heavy stuff, pasta and things like that, but I would eat so much of it that my, that, you know, it would just be that distended stomach. It was painful how much I ate. It was really like, And that was the only way that I felt comfortable after having eaten a meal. Like that was my norm was to eat that much that I would feel it would just hurt. And I taught myself to think that that was normal. Right. And anyone can sort of deprogram that stuff. It takes some, some time and some work and that's what we teach, but anyone can deprogram themselves. It sounds like that's what you were able to do too, with the not doing fast food anymore and creating the, you know, the copycat recipes that are vegan or whatever. 
but this idea of that pain and that, um, you know, the digestion issues and things, once you've done them enough, it's like playing the piano. I mean, if you've, if you've practiced those scales enough, you're going to get good at playing the piano. If you've practiced having pain in your stomach enough, that's going to start to feel normal. And how do we, how do we unwind that? Right. And that's, that's the whole idea here. And you were in the reason I wanted you as one of my first interviews back from, you know, my postpartum journey and all that stuff was because you did it yourself. Like you were able to figure this out yourself. And it has been so inspiring for me to see you do that. And I just want people to know that like, this is possible for everybody. You just have to have the right support. And you were smart enough to be able to find the support, right? And you, you were looking out for it, believing it was possible, wanting something different. Cause what was the alternative? Right. And and you came across that, right? And for us, same thing. Like that's what we teach. It's all about mindset. And if you can get that mindset flipped over, you're golden. Go ahead. You're going to say something. I think. Sorry. I, oh. Was it? Because I was. I was just talking. Well, I was just talking about the, you know, programming your body and your brain to be used to pain as a norm, yeah. right? And so, tell me a little bit about um, your experience a little bit more. So we had some fast food and things like this. Did you ever have any binge Talk, eating tendencies or? Are you kidding me? I was the queen of, uh, it was mostly like chocodiles. That was chocodiles were my best friend. Okay. I would tell the kids, let's go on a goodie run. And we'd go to the like, um, maybe convenience store and get, uh, and this is so, this is how bad it was. If they didn't have chocodiles in this convenience store, I'd go to all of them until I found it. Yeah. It's so, it was so dumb. Yeah, the hunt. And I, that's the one thing I weaned myself off of. I don't like sugar. Mm. Even on certain fruits that, I mean, come to find out, I'm, the reason I probably don't like oranges is because I have a sensitivity to them. Okay. But they're too sweet to me. Mm. They're too sweet. But I made the sauce. It was perfect because it was, you know, it was a sauce. It was cooked down. Yep. It wasn't as much, but. We were talking about your orange chicken recipe, I think, before. before. Oh, Um, oh, yeah. So how did you, how do you get to the point where you don't like sugar anymore? What do you think happened? I think it was like, um, I think I had talked to you before about my hair falling out. And you said there's a detox thing going on. Yeah. It was, uh, in the beginning, that's what it was. It was, it was flushing my body of all those things and I, how long it took, but it wasn't that long, mm. maybe a week or two. Oh, wow. And I didn't want them anymore. And if I, I, I stuck to all the things I was sticking to and I was detoxing and I stopped wanting that anymore. Mm. It just happened Yeah, organically, if that's the way you want to say. Yeah, sure. I was so glad that was the worst burden on my life is that it was like a drug. Mm, Yeah. And even, even there's some nutritarian desserts that you can make like those energy balls I have. I can't make those anymore because once I eat it, that it's like that thing in your brain that triggers an addiction turns on and I want to eat all of them. Mm -hmm. So I don't make those anymore because that was like, uh, uh, Mm -hmm. I'm not going there ever again. Oh, interesting. You know, I'll make yeah. them for Christmas for other people, but I will not taste them. <laughs> yep. Interesting. Interesting. Doing that to myself. Yeah, that's that's interesting because I have had a I had that experience as well for a lot of years. Um I had a lot of excess success with the diet in the first um I guess it was probably three or four years that I was doing it. I've been doing it for nine years now. And Wow. In the beginning, it was tough because I ha- was coming from the binge eating food addiction kind of background and I would find myself binging on healthy food now. So probably what you're talking about, like with these walnut things or whatever, like you can see videos of me back in the day, even when I was doing the 10 and 20, I would, it was this, I'd had that cramming, um, you know, the, the desire to cram the food, the desire to get that really, really full feeling. And that's how you can lose weight on eat to live. Even if you're still a binger is you just make sure what you're binging on is tons of greens and tons of produce. Right. But back then I was like, there must be some way, there must be a way for me to get unaddicted to food so that I just naturally eat what I'm supposed to. And I was on a quest, you know, and you can see me on this quest on my YouTube channel. And It wasn't until I found the mindset stuff that I teach now 
that changed my whole journey to where I can have bread in the house. I can have oatmeal in the house. I can have any dessert in the house. And it just, it's no longer a trigger for me, but that, I mean, that took a lot of work. It took a lot of mindset stuff and sort of deprogramming that, that, um, that flip of the switch. Right. So like, let's say I was going to go off and eat this for a week or two, then I would start to get back towards addictive tendencies. If you're sort of overeating and not eating what you need, but the programs that I put together are all about listening to your hunger and satiety signals, all about emotion. Like, um, I always say it's, it's about the three things that you already have access to everybody. It's your brain, it's your hunger signals, and it's your emotions. And we use those three tools to deprogram our brain from any kind of addiction. And so I, I love that you brought that up because for me, I just wanted to talk about that was my quest was for so long. Like, how could I have these walnut date balls just hanging out like in the fridge or give them to my daughters? And my biggest issue was how can you do this? If you have other people in your life who eat this way, who eat, you know, off plan foods or, and you've constantly got this junk at your house or whatever, it's not always that you can get that kind of food out of your house. So I was like, there must be a way to do this without having to strong arm yourself. Right. And so that's really what, what my work has been about has been just learning how to deprogram ourselves over, you know, a period of time so that it's just no longer an issue anymore. And I find it beautiful that we can. Um, so I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, so we're coming from binging, we're coming from, you know, um, lots of overeating. I mean, all of us are right, but that got to us to that place. And then we decide to do some therapy and, um, and, um, and get through things. What I, I would like to ask about plateaus or like, I want to ask about the graph of your weight loss, right? Like what, what is the graph? If you took this whole three and a half years, what does it look like? Is it, is there a lot of up and downs? Is there a lot of straight plateau lines? What does it look like? There wasn't a lot of ups. There wasn't a lot right now is the worst plateau. Cause I'm like almost there. And I'm so I'm like snail crawling. <laughs> and, uh, I do cleanses sometimes um, at the end of the week, which kind of helps me, especially if I've eaten um, food sensitive stuff. Uh, there's even um, vegetables and junk that I shouldn't eat, and I okay. still eat it sometimes. <laughs> sure, so the sure. cleanse kind of pulls it out of my body and helps me get a like a reset. Okay. And uh, so I don't have issues. Yeah. <laughs> but like you said, uh, eating the things you're not supposed to, but they're good for you anyway. So it's yeah, like, for sure. you know, I can eat this. Yeah. Yeah. That, I I think that's one thing that that I'm dealing with right now. Okay. And like bell peppers are, I I took a sensitivity test and it was um, strong, moderate, and mild. The sensitivity level mm. and bell peppers was the the moderate. I had nothing in the strong, which was un- weird. Oh, interesting. I think I thought other things were. I would imagine what strong would be because peanut butter and apples was one of my favorite. Snacks, even when I wasn't eating healthy, yeah. I ate those. Yep. But they're the worst as far as sensitivity. Oh, wow. I can't okay. Eat them. Oh, my God. Isn't that and ironic? I'm like, if, <laughs> yeah. And I know because I get the worst stomach pain if I eat them both together. I eat them. Oh, wow. Okay. If I just eat maybe peanut butter and banana, maybe it won't. No, it's no. the same. The <laughs> peanut butter or the apple. But if I make applesauce, it's okay. For some reason I cook down the apple, it doesn't hurt. Oh, okay. Thanks. Or if I juice it. Oh, if I put it in a juice. Okay. I don't like the straight apple. I'll put like um my favorite energy drink which is carrot apple spinach. Okay. That juice makes you feel like I got to clean like my house, my sister's <laughs> house and the neighbor's house, you know. You feel so energetic and that's one of my favorite go-to energy drinks. Ooh, I never wonderful. was into the energy drink thing, but oh my God, I discovered that one by accident. Delicious. <laughs> I was yeah. like, wow. That's amazing. But so, yeah, that's the only way I can eat it. So this 150 or so pounds has been kind of a, a, a straight, I wouldn't say straight line, but just a, you know, sort of a, um, well, yeah, straight line kind of down. And now you're in sort of the plateau time. I really like so much of yeah. that probably had to do with the, you know, just that, that, that solid mindset at that point of this is what I'm doing here. I am right. And now Bonnie, you have, this is all a mind. I always say weight loss is a hundred percent math. Like it's a hundred percent math, right? So it's literally just 
having taking in less than we need. Of course, yeah. different foods are going to make that happen better or worse or whatever. But what For the sure. reason that we sort of get to these plateaus is the math has changed and our mindset has changed to allow us to shift around that math, right? So yeah. as yeah. we start to get lower and lower, the math problem changes. For me, I know I'm having a lot of um, math problem changes right now. I don't mean problem as a negative thing. I mean, problem as in, let's just figure this thing out. Math problem changes because I'm, you know, I had cancer last year and I'm doing my um, medication now, which puts me into menopause, which reminds me I'm having a hot flash right now, (laughs) but (laughs) that's a whole other story. But um, for me, the math has changed because now I'm just having these major hormonal changes and it's a, it's a constant thing for me. So to me, my the exact what I need is a moving target, right? And for me, it's pretty fast because I'm on actual medication that creates it. But any other circumstances Um, that we have aging or metabolism changes or menopause or any of these things that happen to us that change the way that our body works, it's all just math, right? So the math is just different when we go through menopause than it was when we were younger, but it's still just a math problem, right? So this point where you are now with 15 pounds to go, What's happening is your, your mindset is stuck on that. This used to be this way. And it used to be like a, you know, a straight shot. And here I am now so close. And it's literally just the, the thinking about how you're so close. That's creating the stall. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) You know, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. It's so so annoying. Yeah. So fascinating. So that's your work now, obviously. And you know what your work is. It's cut out for you, but your work is now to shift that mindset around. Um, yes, I can make some changes, right? Clearly I'm, yeah. I'm an expert at maintaining. And that's why I always love to tell people if you're, if you are doing this up, down, up five pounds, down five pounds dance, which so many of us are stuck in and we're getting frustrated by that. When I was going through that, I flipped it by saying, no, actually what I'm doing is practicing maintenance ahead of time. And I'm feel, really, yep, I'm too. really, really good at maintaining at this point. So then once I get down to my goal weight, I'm going to be so good. Cause I know exact, I'm just going to do exactly what I did here just at that lower right. weight. And so the work then becomes, all right, this next 10, five, 10, 15 pounds, what do I do? It's well, I've got to change the math a little bit somehow. Right. And I've got to change that mindset a little bit. And when we put those things together, I've got to work on my emotions a little bit more. I've got to use my hunger signal more, uh, hunger signals more. And when I put that whole math equation together, the weight comes off, right? Um, and it really is just, you know, it, it's, I think this up five pounds, down five pounds uh, dance is the best thing to practice. And, uh, know, and even, know, even I'm, working on not being, it. even working on not being frustrated by it is good work to yeah. do as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I also have a Samsung Health. I okay. track my steps and my my what I eat, so I can see the nutrients and stuff that I get. And yeah. if I I didn't have enough or I had to, you know, whatever, that kind of helps me stay on track too. And I like to. I couldn't even walk around one room. Now I'm doing seven miles. Wow, seven miles a day. Yeah, but nice. not all at once. I do it in uh, throughout the day because I'm a door dasher. So in between, I do, I, I walk on the treadmill like two, three miles, you know, and then I go dash right. and then I come back and I do a couple more. And yeah, that's, that's how I'm doing things. And uh, I was used to, I used to do it in the neighborhood. Um, and then when the lockdowns happened, I got a treadmill. Okay. Plus it's, yep. you know, how hot it is. You can't walk outside in no. the summertime. It's <laughs> now, no. <laughs> no, heck no. And, and I ran out of sunblock because I am so light and I would get so burnt yep. so easy. So I'm not. I'm not going to get sunburned in my own. I did join the gym for a little while, but you had to watch what they had on the TV when it was always sports. Yeah. It was so boring. Yeah. I know. I, I know. That, I need stimulation to help me keep going. And totally. And uh, I have my own TV. I got my own little cheapo treadmill <laughs> that I had to Jimmy rig straight because it was permanently on an incline. And I was not having that <laughs> in the beginning. I was not doing incline <laughs> running. So I got a block from like a, those RV blocks that you put behind the wheel <laughs> and I put it under there and I straightened it. I said, perfect. Oh, I perfect. It. <laughs> That's perfect. So we got some exercise going. We've got, um, we've got our healthy food going. Um, right now, what would you say is your biggest struggle? 
um, at all? Or is, are there any struggles? What's your biggest struggle? Would you say right now? I have my, um, I, my daughter, my adult daughter lives here and my husband and they have mental health issues. And sometimes okay. I get stressed out Yeah, and that part, you know, the emotional the thing emotions. is still there. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. That. And then I don't binge eat anymore, but that I don't want to get to the point where I want to, you know, and that's yep, a struggle for one sure. to push back push that back, push it back. I don't, sure. I'm like, Oh gosh, they're, they're upset again. Usually most of the time they can't figure out why I keep my cool when they're upset. And that's <laughs> yeah. something I I've mastered. I've yeah. mastered. And also raising kids, the kids having a fit. You don't have a fit back. Best practice the kids ever. They will never calm down. They give they you endless practice. <laughs> yes. I raised seven kids. Wow. So wow. I know how to, I know how to diffuse a yep. situation. My mom was really calm too. I could never figure out why she kept her calm while I was losing my, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. what. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I've just, I've got my mom in me and, and it tells me you stay calm because you're uh, putting the flames out. You're the water to put the flames out. You stay oh. calm. They will get calm. It's all about energy. I feel like yeah. you got to kind of, you got to be that, that to them. So oh. That trying to balance that and being a human being. And yeah, sometimes it does get to me. Yeah. That's my struggle. That's my only struggle, the emotional thing. And yeah. And and so the good news is the good news is we'll always have practice. Won't we? (laughs) We'll always be able to practice because life will, life will deal us practice for the rest of our lives. And just, we keep working on it. Right. We just keep I love that metaphor about from your mom is that, you know, I'm the water for the fire. That's, uh, that's, you know, if I can control my own internal, what's happening internally, I can choose what I want. Right. And we always say in my coaching, like if I can choose my feelings and I can, because I can choose my thoughts Mm -hmm. because thoughts create feelings, actions follow from the thoughts and the feelings. So if our if our constant feeling and we can't regulate it is anger or some type of really strong negative emotion or stress or these kinds of things, because we're thinking all of these other things, we're going to act in a way that is a result of that, right? So we're going to overeat. We're not going to plan our food. We're not going to really stick to it, right? But if we can get ourselves back, no matter what happens, we're going to have an automatic reaction to it and that's okay. But if we can get ourselves back to a place of calm, peaceful empowerment, then that's where the salad making comes in, right? <laughs> oh, I love salads now. I love salad so much now. <laughs> I used to not. And my husband would always eat salad. Like we go to a buffet a lot when we were younger and living in yeah. Vegas. Yeah. And he would eat three plates of meal and like three plates of dessert. And he'd be so skinny and I would eat <laughs> less and get more, you know, yep. but <laughs> So tell me about, tell me about your environment as far as, uh, the way that your family eats. Do they eat this way with you as well? My husband kind of does. He he likes my cooking and he, if I make a, uh, a recipe, he's like, okay, I'll eat it. I'll eat it. He he, he he doesn't say he don't want to eat it in the beginning. He's like, I don't want to eat that. And then he'd eat. Yeah. I was going to ask you, what was it like in the beginning, the, the transition of, you know, having kids at home, having a husband who didn't eat this way, what was that transition of, and mom's going to start doing this now. How did that go? It was weird. It was, it was, um, I, I kind of had him doing his own food so I wouldn't have to be exposed to what I was making, like if I was making those type of foods. Yeah. He didn't like it at first. And I think that's why he finally said, you know what? I'm just going to eat with cheese because I don't want to make my own food. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good, that's that's a good weapon. <laughs> it's so, I'm so mad because he lost weight too. He was 200 pounds and now he's 160. <laughs> and I'm like, he just did that through me. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> good. Just want to come get more. And so good. See, his blood pressure is too high, and he and I'm an amateur herbalist too. I okay. would love to be certified a uh, holistic nutrition and herbalism, but um, I'm teaching him what foods to eat, what not to eat to keep his blood pressure the way it is. It's to keep it down, and uh, there's a lot of tea drinking. You know, not tea. It's the herbal stuff. Yep. Um, hibiscus and, 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 um, um, turmeric and ginger and nice. different things and, wow. uh, keeping away from him away from beef 
and it, he mostly eats he's almost like a vegetarian. You know, he eats mostly what I eat, and sometimes he'll eat eggs, and sometimes he'll eat chicken. Did you if, ever? If did you ever it. struggle with um, having those foods in the house when you started? In the beginning, in the very beginning. But like I said, when I went through that detox and that mindset of that's poison, when I see that food, I think of death and disease. Okay. How do you think you got yourself there? How do you think you got yourself there? The the therapy and the digging deep within with the the, uh, meditation. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of self-reflecting meditation, digging deep into who you are and and, um, what your purpose is in life and blah, blah, blah. So these kinds of the, the meditations that you did, can you tell us a little bit about what you did there? Did you use an app? Did you, how did you learn to meditate? YouTube. 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 Okay. Um, oh the, yeah. I mean, honest, come on. I should, I should have known that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. YouTube has, uh, I'm, I love the honest guys. Those guys, uh, their voices are so, he's got an English accent. He's very soothing. Okay. And, um, I'll and put a he, link for all of, the, all of the resources you're sharing. I'll put in the link. Okay. So, so the honest guys, what else were you going to say? The honest guys. And there's another one that I'm doing. It's an, it's, I don't know what's up with the English accent, but it's a woman and she, and I have this really cool spot in the backyard in this hammock and I take my shoes off and I put my feet on the ground. I, you to, to ground yourself. And I put headphones on and, and I close my eyes and, oh, it's so Zen and peaceful okay. and it so helps. But the honest guys help a lot. Cause I had very big imagination and it helps you like imagine this or whatever. And I was right there. I was okay. there when he was telling me to imagine and I could see the trees, I could smell the ocean, you know? Mm. And I mean, it's so transformed. So if someone wanted to, me- and I, I do believe in meditation as well. I don't meditate in this way myself. I use more thought work, but I know, but I have meditated in the past and I have used it during yoga class as well. And it really did make a huge change for me, but can you explain why it made a change for you and how might someone get started if they've never done it before? Getting to know me and loving me. There's a lot of. What if someone doesn't know? What if someone doesn't know what the word meditation means? Can you explain how you got to know yourself meditating? What does it mean? It means to dig deep into your self subconscious and dig out the garbage and clean house. Mm -hmm. That's basically what I did. And you do this by, so I just want to kind of, I just want to, I want to get to the really like kindergarten level here. Right. Cause I know many people okay, have okay. never meditated before. Right. And, and I know that from my experience, when I started doing it, I was like, Oh, this is what it's like. Oh, okay. And so that's where I want to, I want to get to the kindergarten level here. And so for someone who's never meditated and wouldn't know why or how to get started, you might suggest let's try something on YouTube, right? Like try a, try a video or something like that, perhaps. And then you're yeah. they're They're Breath what they're prompting you with questions and you're answering it in your mind. Is that how this, how is that well, like, how you dig deep? The music starts you uh, to, it really affects your mood and how, mm-hmm. how you feel. So they get this calming music. Yeah. Then they, <clears throat> then they tell you to do this deep breath. The deep breath helps you calm too. Mm-hmm. It's like those two things. Cause my brain is like, I am a little two-year-old running around a room in my brain, you know, yeah. and, and I need that so bad to focus mm. and um, having that calming music and then doing the deep breath, doing the deep breath until you feel the relax that you need to feel. A lot of times it's three breaths and there might be more. Mm. If you need to feel to the point where you're okay, I'm relaxed. I can okay. almost fall asleep. Mm. Then it's, ready to delve into your subconscious. It's like you opened up that door so you can get in there. Okay. Because, I mean, when you've got those busy thoughts going on, you're not going to be able to get down in there and and dig it out. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And And then what happens? Learning to love myself, too. That was another thing. Those things helped me to learn to love myself and realize that I am worthy of being healthy and happy and I mean, you don't really, oh yeah, I'm happy. I wasn't, that was my famous word. Yeah, I'm happy. But inside I'm like, ah, 
you know? Mm. I was really good at hiding that. Mm. <laughs> really good. So let's go back to kindergarten. So you you got the music on, you take a deep breath, you're calming down breath, your nervous through system. Through your nose, out your mouth. It's very important. You got to do it that way. Okay. So and, in your uh, nose, out your mouth, you start calming down that nervous system. The thoughts start to slow down a bit. Bonnie, how do you get to dig deep? Are we talking about thoughts here? Is it, do the thoughts just come out? Do you use prompts in meditation? Are you, do you have sometimes. subject matter when you start meditating? Like I'm yeah. going to figure this out today. Why I feel so poorly. What, how, what do you do as subject matter when you're meditating? Well, once you go to meditate, what do I, what am I struggling with today? What am I struggling with in my life today? Mm-hmm. Then say, um, whatever it is, I can't think of a thing. You can find a meditation for the exact thing that you're mm-hmm. struggling with. So once you do the breath work, then they start talking to you about what that struggle is and getting you to focus on the solution and, Like, say it is you have to focus on a white light, and then you get to the white light, and then and these steps really bring you to that point. It's hard to explain, Mm. but whatever it is, it's say it's what if it was like, we'll just say, like, it was a relationship issue, like you're having an issue with your spouse or something. How might that work? So you had a fight with spouse, you're coming into your meditation. This is the thing you're struggling with right now. It's maybe your relationship with your spouse. How, how might you use meditation to calm down that type of an issue? I wouldn't be able to do it without the, um, the person. It's like, it's like, they're my therapist, you know, the Mm. the person on the video talking. Yep. Um, I couldn't do it on my own yet. Yep. I have done it with just music that, I mean, I'm almost there. Mm-hmm. If I can just do it without, without the person talking, mm-hmm. I, I can do that sometimes, but the person talking is literally helping you get there Beautiful. wherever you need to go. Mm-hmm. It, it is so easy. Just listen and follow their steps. And they, they'll tell you to whatever you're walking down a path and you open a door and in this door, you see pictures of different situations, say you're having a fight with your spouse, different pictures of the fights that you've had. And um, maybe you have a picture of you being happy or, you know, I mean, I'm saying he he brings you through these things and this is how they do it. It's really interesting the way they do that. Like you're, you're on a beach, you're, you're watching the clouds and these clouds look this way. Why do they look this way? And you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. it helps you. And it's the only way I can explain it, yep. but that those are good for the beginners, you know, yep. and to learn how to meditate and, and yeah. to get through whatever you would need to get through with yeah. the meditation. Yeah. And once you've practiced this so much, then as you're alluding to it, it's that starts to become automatic. Those thoughts and those words and those sentences start to become the tape inside of your head, you know, just all the time when you're going, it's like, oh, what did I learn in the relationship meditation that I did recently? Oh, I learned this about my relationship, right? So such a good mechanism. And and the way that I coach is that, as I said, our thoughts create our feelings and our feelings create our actions. So if our thoughts are constantly negative about the situation and he shouldn't be doing this and she shouldn't be doing this and this is so terrible and all that, it's going to create negative feelings. It's going to lead to negative actions. But if we can calm down that first part, right? The thoughts. Of, first, you, first you, as you're saying, you start with the breathing, right? You, you allow that nervous system to just, we're safe right now. We're okay. Mm-hmm. We're going to take a moment here and we're going to do something for ourselves. And then we start working on those thoughts, right? And those thoughts then start to affect those feelings. Those feelings start to affect those actions. And then the the trick here, and I know that you know this trick already, but the trick is once you've done this on YouTube enough, you can do this real time, no matter what happens in your life. Yes. And one thing you you could do to start, even if it's you're faking it to make it, Look in the mirror and say, I love you. <laughs> That's a tough one for some folks. It is. Even yeah. if it's your fake and it's to make it, mm-hmm. you got to reprogram your brain. And that a lot of those meditations have affirmation meditations. So yeah. you're, they're telling you what to say about your love for yourself. Mm-hmm. I'm a good person. I do good things. Yeah. I'm worthy of love. And, and you're saying these over and over again. If you have to do that meditation all week. Yeah. If you have to, just to get yourself to that point, then that's what you got to do. Yeah. 
and then it becomes second nature. Yep. And, and I, use- like I tell my daughter, you know, she's always saying, um, he made me do this. She made me. Do- I'm like, Emily, you're in control of your thoughts, your actions, and your decisions. You have a choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds like you're pa- sounds like you're passing that buck down to your children, right? You're teaching them about that exactly. Yeah. yeah. In our programs in the Eat to Live Family and the Eat to Live Accelerator, we do a very very similar. Like we don't use meditation as much. We use more of like the cognitive this model of thoughts create feelings, feelings create actions, and then we teach everybody how to use that model themselves real time, which is the same exact. Um, result as using the meditation way that you're talking about you get we we end up at the same place which is that we can do this stuff real time whenever we need it right which as we know is the whole uh, like yes the nutrients are important and the fiber is important and that's going to make it easier for you but really it's the emotional control and the presence of mind and body. That's what creates this long-term, first of all, the shift to want to start eating to live, but then the the long-term consistency comes from this stress uh, work, right? The thought work, the feeling work, all that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important. You can't just go in without it. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I tried to in the beginning mm-hmm. and it just went, mm-hmm. I mean, it just fizzed, like, yeah. uh, you know, fizzed out. I wasn't yep. there. Yep. I wasn't there. Yep. Yet. Bonnie, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, let me, I'm just going to, we're going to go to some practical questions here and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. So, um, do you ever go out to eat? And if you do, what are your strategies? Okay. Well, when I go to Vegas, um, most of the time it's for multiple things because we want to, you know, we want to go like, I got to go this day for one thing and this day for another thing. We try to plan it all at once. Yep. So we'll end up having to have a meal. And gosh darn it, I miss the Go Vegan Cafe. They had the healthy I food. Oh, I, I miss that place. They I had know. raw vegan. Yep. Oh, I so love their good. raw vegan. Their raw vegan was really good. Mm-hmm. But also, if I have to go, I try to make good choices. Try is the operative word. Because mm-hmm. sometimes when you're hungry, you're stupid. <laughs> and you make dumb decisions. I'm sorry. I just got to say it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I go to. I've been to, oh gosh, I can't even think. Um, pots, I like pots. I know yeah. there's some some foods that you shouldn't eat there, and I've fallen in love with falafel, and I've made it myself, and I yeah. love it. Yeah, pots is oh a pots is a. If you guys are ever coming to Vegas, pots is a, a street food, street Egyptian food, if you can imagine <laughs> it. Vegas has everything, but uh, and they they I recently know. moved. I haven't been to their new location, but yeah, incredible food there for sure. I accidentally went to the old one. Forgot that oh, they no. <laughs> I was so bad. I wanted my aunt to try it. She was ready to try it. Yeah. Then we my, ended up I think my Chipotle. favorite place I've I've talked about it a lot is Veggie Nation here. They only have one location now, but it's downtown. Have you gone there before? Somebody else just recommended it to me. I've oh, you have go. to go. You have to go. It's so, go. I mean, we're not talking super nutritarian food here, but we're, but there no. is nutritarian food available. But this is, yeah. you know, and I love what we're talking about because this is the strategy of um, of of even making the decision to just change the type of restaurant you go to. Like, look, we don't go to steakhouses anymore. We go to vegan restaurants, right? And then and then once you've sort of made that shift, even if when you go to the vegan restaurant, even if it's once a week, a few times a week, whatever. You start just eating vegan. Maybe it's not the healthiest choices, but but it's easy to get off of steakhouses and fast food when you have those types of options, right? And then yeah. you sh- you keep shifting yeah. further and further towards the healthier choices. But yeah, yes. okay, yes. So what I mean, do you usually? Like Chipotle, you could oh, go sorry. ahead. Tell me about Chipotle. Yeah, Chipotle. You could just have the bowl. Yeah, and you have you have beans. You have the better rice. There's the veggies. And um, there's so many avocado. Things, and the lettuce, and yep. avocado. You can make a, such a healthy meal at Chipotle. Yep. And uh, there's like there's other places like the vegan cafe. If you got fries, they bake their fries. They didn't yep. fry them. Yep. That's one thing I loved, but I hated. I want. I've been trying to. I was trying to give them advice about their veggie burgers because all they do, and you bite them, and they just turn. You know, just squished. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know why? I'm sorry with the noise. I keep making that noise. Um, <laughs> you know why? I've realized a lot of the recipes say oat flour. When you use 
garbanzo bean flour, they stick together better. Yep. It's very true. You use that flour and it, it sticks together better. Yep. And I was trying to tell them that, but I was like, oh, well, you got to do what you got to do. But it still was still <laughs> it's good. Fine, but it's fine. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, that's good. That's good. So um, do you, uh, oh, I wanted to mention, we are going to be um, offering everyone watching this video or listening to the podcast a free PDF. We call these our cheat sheets that is going to have oh, yeah. your favorite recipes in there. So I just wanted to name off the recipes. It's your black bean burger recipe, chickpea it's pancakes, black bean burger. Mm-hmm, minestrone soup, and then the Dr. Furman's chickpea burger that you have um, altered. And there's a few other recipes in there too, that I'm going to throw in that she gave me. She actually, um, Bonnie actually gave me um, images of her I could tell it's her sort of three ring binder with her flip pages, with her recipes in there. Um, So that's going to be really valuable for everybody. If you want to see Bonnie's favorite go-to dishes that she makes at home, um, you can get that by going to the wateringmouth.com slash cheat sheets, sign up for the cheat sheets there. We'll send you a password. You'll be able to download that PDF really easily, you know, printable PDF there to get Bonnie's recipes. And then my last question is it's kind of a two-part question. Do you do you think that anyone can do the nutritarian diet? And do you think that anyone should do the nutritarian diet? Like she's if you if you listen to the podcast, she's to live. unequivocally she's shaking her head yes here. <laughs> yes. And she says, What if you want to live? <laughs> if you want to live on this planet and survive, oh well, heck yeah. yeah. You don't anybody- have to be a a health nut or whatever they call us. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be that. It doesn't have to be that. It's, 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 it's food to sustain life. What do you That's recommend anyone who is looking to get started? What do you think is the best way for someone to get started? Read the book. <laughs> the book so helps. I also read uh, How Not to Die. Oh, That's good another one. Good book. Yeah. I love him so much. I love yeah. his talks on his treadmill. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then what do you think is the next step? Once someone has read the book or maybe watched some of their videos, what, what should they do next? I think joining your group is so much uh, helpful because um, it's like, where do I start? Mm. What do I eat first? How do you know, sometimes you need help to plan it out. Yep. Cause you feel overwhelmed. You want to do it all at once. Yep. And you need, I'm a, I'm a Virgo. I don't know, <laughs> but I like structure. I like planning. I like lists. Yep. I like stuff like that. And, and it's so much easier to get started when you're overwhelmed and you can't figure that list out or mm. where to start. Having that resource is such a blessing. Yep. Such a blessing. Yeah. Oh, good. It's yeah. So Bonnie, yeah. So, um, so getting support, right. Getting support from a coach, perhaps like, myself and all my coaches are certified life coaches. So we do the mindset stuff, but we also do the recipe stuff too, but such a great way to get started. Just download one of our five day challenges or the nine day, the free nine day challenges on my website, right. And just try some recipes or download Bonnie's cheat sheet from this one, where you can just get some recipes, the tried and true stuff. Like why, why reinvent the wheel? People have already been, you know, they already know what the good stuff is. So, uh, yeah. So, um, Awesome. Great. Amazing information. Thank you so much for taking your time with us, Bonnie. I, it's just been so wonderful to get to know you and I appreciate it. Same, same. You, you saved my life. I'm so grateful for you. I'm going to start crying, but watching your video videos helped me with that part we were just talking about. What do I eat? What do I start? And I'm like, Oh, Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, let me do that. You know, watching you do it helps me do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, on my Facebook page, after every other day, I do two, every two days, I do my um, inspirational picture with a saying to encourage people every, every, I can't talk, <laughs> different sayings for each time. And I'm like, even if it helps one person get through whatever they're getting through, yep. it's worth it. And a lot of times it's me projecting what I need to tell me. You for know? sure. For sure. You <laughs> found the trick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It really helps. I mean, we need to help each other. All of us mm. can't do it alone. Even if you act like you're doing it alone, you're not, you're doing it with help. <laughs> Agreed. I had a lot of help. 
Thank you so much, Bunny. It's been so inspiring to listen to you. Um, so if anyone listening to this or watching this wants to follow Bonnie or, um, you know, know more of her stuff, you can see on the board behind me, her YouTube channel, it's, um, a nutritarian in La La Land. So that's a, and then the word nutritarian and then the word in, and then the word La La, which is L A L A. And then the word land L A N D. If you just type that into the YouTube search bar or in, into Google and just put YouTube, um, you'll, you'll be able to come up with her YouTube channel there, or I'm going to put, put a link for that down below. I said, if you want the recipes, you sign up for the cheat sheets at the wateringmouth.com slash cheat sheets. And also if you want to, the, the free Facebook group that we were talking about, the High Nutrient Lifestyle Group, I'll put a link for that as well. It's a great place to get started here with a bunch of other nutritarians. We've got like well over 6,000 6, people in there now. And then the last what? thing I want to just mention is my programs that I'm talking about, this mind, the very specific mindset coaching with these, you know, the three parts that we talk about. I offer the Eat to Live Family and the Eat to Live Accelerator. And those are a couple of really powerful, amazing programs that I have. If you want to know more about them or find out if they're right for you, just hop on a strategy call with us. All you have to do is go to thewateringmouth.com slash strategy application and just fill out the application. You can, you can sign up for a time to talk with us about um, these calls, see if one of those different plans is going to be good for you to help you or go the, go the easy route and just do the high nutrient lifestyle group for a while on Facebook, see how it goes, make some friends. Um, the family, eat till the family is also a place where there's tons of people, hundreds of people in there doing the same thing and getting some group coaching at the same time from us life coaches. Okay. So that's it for now, uh, Bonnie. I just, I'm so thankful to you for taking this time out and for us finally getting to chat and uh, we'll see you around in the High Nutrient Lifestyle Group and, and YouTube. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> Bye.